The Nigerian police force yesterday night announced that the autopsy procedure of lead singer Ideri Olua Oladimeji Aloba, popularly known as Mobad, has been successfully completed. The Afrobeat singer died last Tuesday, aged 27, under what many have termed mysterious circumstances, prompting the acting inspector general of police, Mr. Kayode Egbetokun, to order a thorough probe by the Lagos Police Command. Meanwhile, youths across the country have been protesting against the death of Mubad. Yesterday night in Lagos, the youths gathered in large numbers to stage a candlelight procession and tribute concert for the late Nigerian singer, demanding justice. Arise correspondent Ikena Kinsley reports. On the 12th of September, 2023, Nigerian music industry lost a talent, Ileri Lua Aloba, popularly called Mobad. And since his death, there's been an outrage on social media, people calling for justice for those responsible for his demise. Today, we are taking a walk from Lekki Phase 1 gate down to Murray Park as fans pay tribute to him in Lagos State. Justice for Mobad! Justice for Mobad! Justice for Mobad. Justice for Mobad. Justice for Mobad. Social media has been buzzing for two weeks since the demise of former Malian records artist Mobad. His death has enraged fans who have been calling for the Nigerian police to investigate issues surrounding his death. However, the Lagos State Police Command on Thursday confirmed the exhumation of the corpse of the late singer for autopsy to investigate circumstances surrounding his death as Nigerians continue to call for justice. We are here for Mubad, not against any police. We are here for justice for Mubad. A peaceful procession to pay tribute to the late singer was held in Lagos as fans staged a peace walk from Lekki Phase 1 to Mori Okunola Park in VI, where a concert was held in his honor. <laughs> Celebrities like Dotun, Kike, Zlatan, OGB, David O, just to mention a few, were present to pay their respects to the late rapper. <laughs> Attendees had a few words to say about the artist. The government is doing everything we can on this issue. And, uh, you know, I want to give thanks to, to our governor, you know, for taking every necessary step to make sure that we get just some bad. It's something I'm also willing and ready to be part of, and I've done, I've done everything possible within my means to make sure that, you know, we get this. And I'm happy that every stakeholder on this are also doing everything possible to make sure that justice is being served. And uh, that's also what, we are, what, what the youth are also re-echoing you know, to, to, uh, today. And, uh, and I'm sure we're definitely going to get that justice. I believe the death of Mubad will change the narrative. As it used to be before, whereby the, the industry is divided, this time around we are coming out with one voice. An injury to one is an injury to all. Justice must be served. Imole, Imole, Imole forever. I will never, ever, ever forget. And we're going to make sure that we get justice. That is what we police they do. We they still form activity. If they like, we they no show working. Justice is a must. Everybody that was responsible in his death must be made to pay. We cannot continue to exist in a lawless country for the sake of Mubad so that he can find eternal peace, we must make sure that we get justice. I'm here to honor him. I mean, I considered him a friend when he was here and on his passing, it's good to honor people when they're here and when they're gone. Um, and even for an artist, when you look around here now, you see the amount of people here, the amount of people here to support Mobad. It's, it's almost like a dream of every artist. And I'm happy that, you know, he's getting it right now. I don't know if he can see it, but people loved him when he was here, and I'm sure people still love him very much. And um, we just pray that this kind of thing doesn't happen again. We've all gathered here because we want justice for Mobad. Um, the situation that has just happened is very bad for our industry, and it, for me as a record label owner, it has kind of given uh, me uh, a lot of things to think about on how to manage people and all of that, and how disputes can be resolved. So we're here because we, we are gathered here to make sure that Mobaz get justice. And for him to get justice, it helps our industry. This is a very, very sad situation. That's why we're gathered here. This boy has fought so hard. The voice of the youth in Lagos have been heard loud and clear with one demand only, that justice is served. You don't have to hurt me before you win. As the late rapper Mobad lives on through his music, fans and music lovers can only hope 
that those responsible for his death he brought to book. Ikena Kingsley, Arise News. Let me see more few bad, more that see few good. Now I'm more few better through Larry Bujelegba. To repay my work, I said I put my one drug. Now I'm more on top, life me or any contour. Joining us now on this show as we discuss the implications of Mubat's death and a review of Nigerian music artist's lifestyle is Kenny St. Brown, an urban contemporary Nigerian gospel musician, Anida David, popularly known as King David III, former national administrator of a former musicians association of Nigeria, PIMA. Well, thank you very much uh, for joining us. Well, quickly, just to get your thoughts as we open up the conversation mm. on Mubad. The various dimensions that we have seen, I mean, in terms of scale of response, in terms of uniting artists, young people, I mean, this has been one, you know, kind of a death. Um, protests, processions, as far as Spain, New York, Wolverhampton in the United Kingdom, in many cities across uh, Nigeria, with people bringing up issues about industry, about relationship between artists and their record labels and their managers, about parenting, about relationships, about the role of the security agencies and all of that. So many ways to look at it. But uh, let's start with you, Kenny Sembra, and then we'll go to David III. Um, you know. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to keep my emotions you know, under wrap right now. Uh, I'm, I'm, doctor, you know, what, what you, we are seeing now is as a result of neglect. Neglect from government. Neglect from the system that should have provided a regulation, policies, protection, defense. But this is an industry, the entertainment industry in Nigeria is organically grown. And so because it's organically grown, they think that, ah, they go settle themselves, they, they, they find their way, they will find their way. I would be, it has reached a stage where it's gone beyond our hands. In a situation where a record labeled, I mean, this is it's very open, very porous. Anybody today, tomorrow you can decide that, okay, I have my own record label. If you find somebody here who can sing, there's, no, there's nothing like a NAVDAC. <laughs> if NAVDAC can have, the pharmaceutical industry can have a regulation, regulate, regulatory body called NAVDAC for the food and drugs. If the organization, the, the manufacturing industry can have standard organization of Nigeria. And they are called industries. The creatives are not just, not just the singers and the Nollywood. We have the comedians, we have the dancers, we have uh, um, costumers, we have makeup artists, we have event rentals, we have lightings, we have so many, so many stakeholders. And this, our uh, government, I mean, I mean I'm, I'm a true Nigerian, I mean, I'm part of, we are all part of this. But if somebody comes out to say that, we need the regulations now. And they think that uh, there is tourism. The Ministry of Tourism should cover. Excuse you. What, what much of tourism? Do, tourism what, what is the, the correlation between the tourism industry and the creative industry is that the creative industry boosts the tourism industry. So they don't know much about the industry. So they don't know when, when, when a record label, will, when, when an artist is being signed on, there are no rules, no guidelines, no, no, a, a record owner, Lebanon Lebe can decide that, oh, I'm signing for 10 years. And so it's 20, 80, 80 to the record label, 20 to the, to the artist. And tomorrow, at the beginning, the artist is hungry. At the beginning, the artist wants to be heard. At the beginning, the artist just wants to be famous. At the beginning, the hunger, the artist would not even, in fact, the illiteracy in the artist, because it's an industry where we have more, 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 more illiterate. I mean, just part of that language. People that are not so learned. I mean, people that are not educated. But guess what? What they have is the innate talent. And any way that gives them platform at that point, they want to roll. But at the point, as, this, as they go on, they realize that, ah, uh, this is slavery. 80-20, 70-20 as the case may be. But guess what? The record label continues 
to enjoy, to exploit, to, to, to cheat, to, to enslave the artists because there are no regulations. There is no government body that you submit, that you pick a form from, that you want to own a record company. Okay, these are the rules and the guidelines. So bring the lessee, you are signing a new artist. Okay, what, how many years, three years, two years, then what, on what category, I mean, what is the sharing rate, ratio, and all that. So neglect from, from all of that, because it was, I mean, it's an industry where every, when Sony Music went down way back, and Premier Music, young people had to come up. New sound, it's called Afrobeat, where everybody's trying, Olamide tried, he excelled, Signed few people, and that's how it's been rolling. It's still organically grown. This the neglect now has resulted in the whole world rising up to ask for justice okay. out of an abuse that could have been controlled. Okay, um, uh, David the third, let's bring you into the conversation. And if you knew Mubad personally, maybe you also want to com comment uh, on him. You having served as an administrator of a P man. Thank you so much, uh, Doctor. Good morning. Uh, viewers at home. Good morning to the studio crew. Well, um, I want to align with my long lost sister, uh, Kenison Brown. It's been a while, yeah. <laughs> I totally agree with your passion and the compassion. We, we join all our brothers and sisters all across the world to mourn this very, very talented young boy, a shining star who's just left us. But after that is said and done, I would like to speak more from the industry perspective I think that um, <clears throat> the structure of government all across Africa needs to be helped. And like we have always said, Kenneth and Brown, you've mentioned the Ministry of Culture and Tourism and all of that, the Ministry of Information. These are songs that we have sung for close to two decades running now, as far as I've known you in the industry, and we have met at events like this. I do think that <clears throat> the time has come when stakeholder and corporate practitioner sectors within our industry should come together and do a lot of things. I don't want us to keep on reacting to events that happen like this. It is either somebody has died untimely or unjustly and then we are asking for justice for the one or somebody has fallen ill in his old age and he's such a a famous person, and we want to gather money to, you know, look after the person's illness in, or something like that. All of these things are too sympathetic and too emotional. They are too reactive in, a, in the most unprofessional uh, 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 ways. I like to think that opportunities have arisen across our modern world that should, that should, that should, that should uh, persuade us into some kind of corporate uh, action as an industry. When I say this, look, the television industry in Nigeria, or let's talk about the media industry as a whole, is a very, very big stakeholder. Amongst our industry, that sector is the most organized, I should think. Then, like you mentioned, the event, uh, event space owners and other ancillary services providers like the lighting and the sound reinforcement sector and all of those, all of these people are ancillary sectors. But if we can form a round table we have what everybody is carrying around on his person now, which is like a mini television station on his own right. We can broadcast ourselves. We can do all of these things. The kind of money these young boys are making today, so near there and the rest and the older generation never saw those kinds of money from just, today the recording companies are gone. In, in the past, we didn't have record labels uh, 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 carrying on so much weight. You know, so what am I talking about? There are new opportunities now. The, if you know the Nigerian, um, pop population alone, what we contribute to the global media industry, you'll be shocked. We're a country of 200 and something million. Out of that, almost half of us are steady consumers of bandwidth. And that is where these, these foreign companies who are streaming organizations make a lot of money. So if we come and uh, persuade our government and say, look, this is revenue going, let us have something somewhere that we can now say, okay, let us have a round table where the elders or the more educated amongst us can form a committee to criticize, another committee to evaluate, another committee to give rise to rating and rank ranking of performances across board, not only of the artists, but the support system for the artists like the record labels, the artist management companies, and so on and so forth. Before you know it, things will begin to take shape. Before you know it, there might even be a reservoir 
of funds that we can take care of the, the intimate things that we cry out to the public for that honestly makes somebody like me ashamed of the industry sometimes, you know. So having, having said all of that, I do think that if we keep mentioning industry, 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 we should try and now at this time in our lives try to requalify that industry. Okay. Right. Let me let me stay with you, um, David the Third, especially with regards since you've served under PIM and that's the Performing Musicians Association of Nigeria, and what role they play because part of the reason why this organization was set up was to protect the interests of musicians, to have an umbrella body to advocate to ensure that Nigerian musicians had a um, at least some form of association to protect, largely protect their interests. Number one is what do what does PMAN currently offer Nigerian musicians? What how do people join? Is it an organization that embraces have are musicians um, you know signed up to this? Is it popular among musicians? Are you functioning in the way that you ought to? So that even in this kind of so the issues you've mentioned, you can advocate, you can lobby government. We have a, we now have a minister of not just culture and tourism, but for the creative economy as well. And um, you know, under this new administration, in Lagos State to have a commissioner for tourism, art, and culture. So there are government agencies, but how do organizations like PMAN help in this regard? And then for um, Kenneth and Brown, I'd like to just say that, I mean, you talked about contracts, regulatory body, as we have with um, SON, as we have with, um, you know, other regulatory, yeah. CORIN, all the regulatory bodies. But the truth is that a contractual agreement is a private agreement. You, you, that it, it's, it's the individuals involved that have to understand the position, either from the record label and the artist. And so perhaps we should look more into educating people more about entering contracts. Because once you're over 18, you can enter into a contract and it's binding, it's legally binding. The only thing we see now is exploitation, where you exploit young people who want a shot at you know, ex exploring their talent and they're exploited. So I'd like to ask how how can you work with government, and I've talked about the minister and the commissioner, to ensure that they provide an enabling environment for musicians to thrive so that they don't feel the need to have to sell their souls in this regard to get on a record label? I'll start with you, David, the first. Okay, thank you so much. Um, concerning the relationship between uh, artists and record labels, it's an, it's an age-old uh, age uh, problem. Even Michael Jackson, his demise was, is traceable to inconsistencies in the administration of his contract with Sony Music. So we have had that problem for as long as the industry has always been there. So that is, those are things that, those are the reasons why we need uh, a permanent hands-on, like an advisory or a, com a, a commission, or just like my sister uh, Kenny said, we need that regulatory organization set up because the disagreement between one or, one or two people we con is, is part of human life, you know? So people will always disagree. There's no doubt about that. If you leave, if you leave the, the if, 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 you, if, if, if you give the chance to everybody, everybody will disagree with everybody eventually, yeah, well, you know? Organizations, like unions, yeah, I'm coming or, to that yes, now. umbrella bodies now, like... When you, when you talk about the functionality of P-Man, yes. just like we have... The, the, the problem with the Nigerian Bar Association and Medical Association from time to time, even the NLC and the rest, every aspect of every aspect of organization in our country's history behaves like the government. My problem with the government is that we have not evolved in governance beyond what the colonial masters left us in 1960. We are still maintaining the same structure and the world has gone ahead and left us behind. That is how the industry also has gone ahead and left the payments of this world behind also. When PMAN was started, we didn't have streaming, streaming uh, uh, portals. We didn't have all of that. We were in the traditional uh, heritage of um, record companies. There was only music there in Oregon and, and in uh, Keja and uh, premium music in Satellite Town and all of these recording companies. Those people have disappeared. Okay? Then... It's ineffective currently. Sorry? It's ineffective. It's not effective currently. It's just that, you know, organizations and, you know, governance in, 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 in our own locality suffer this this um, outdatedness, let us say. So it is the same thing we are, we are talking about as more educated people, can we do something to help? When we come down, I'm not saying that PMAN should be thrown out of the window. 
I'm, saying, I'm not also saying that the government should be thrown out of the window, but we who know what needs to be done should be called and said, okay, or we should call ourselves and say, okay, please, this thing is, is becoming too embarrassing. Let us propose this. If, do we need to go to the National Assembly or do we need to go to our state, state houses of assembly? Where do we start from? But if we can put this in place, this is what will, this, this is what will come out of this effort positively that we prevent these things from happening. All right. All right. Let me come to you. Okay, uh, I, if I to recall your question again, it's... so it's with regards to um, now we have a, min a ministry because we talked about the ministries, government, yes. and coming in. Yes. So they have their role to play, not yes. necessarily in terms of looking at the fine details of contracts, yes. but yes. providing an enabling yes. environment yes. for yes. Um, the arts, yes. um, you know, yes. to 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 mm. to flourish. Yeah. Okay. How can we ensure that artists are protected through policies yeah. and law? Okay. Uh, that would come by them putting an institution now. Because if a governor comes today, if he has a plan for the tourism and the economy, the creative economy, I mean, the creative industry, it might be like, okay, road shows or carnivals and all of that. And another governor comes, he changes all of that. It also same with um, the, uh, the, the, the commissioner. He may be having this, you know, this is how this thing, should, this way it should go. Let up, let's push the hotels because we are, everything is put under the umbrella of tourism. Excuse us, let us separate. The same thing that I would advocate for the separation of the Ministry of Youth from youth and sports. So that one ministry can face the problem of the youth. Because see, both the youth, I mean the youth, they fall under this demise of the inactivity he, 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 he neglect from the Ministry of Sports. Yes. Because most, most of the money there is a Ministry of Sports and um, sports and Youth and Sport. The money there is spent on sports. So it's, it's, it's spend that is spent on the youth, if there's any. So I'm coming. Same thing with tourism. So they, they should give, if, if, the, if the federal government has created a creative industry ministry, Creative for the because we end the creative economy is huge, except if they want to deny it. But if, as far back as when um, President Goodluck Jonathan was there, he stated that the, eco the creative economy was the second big biggest um, revenue generation. Uh, um, uh, where, the, where the country was getting the second part of the, I mean the gen revenue revenue for Nigeria. Revenue oh, generation okay. power. Okay, I'm so seeing. So while you're speaking to that, mm. you can respond to that. Yeah. Are you satisfied? So the creative industry, are you satisfied no. with government's response to what has transpired? No, they haven't even do it. Okay, so okay this, this, is, this is well. just, this is, an, uh, this is a spontaneous response. There is a problem here. We need to quickly attend to, to this so that the youth will not create another NSAS situation. So thank God for yesterday, it was peaceful. But where I am going to is that the government needs to put, let them create an agency. Let it, let it be the way we have NAFDAQ, the way we have uh, a standard organization of Nigeria. Let us have like the creative economy industry, the creative development agency for of Nigeria or Lagos State um, 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 and, and create a Lagos State Entertainment Development Agency to attend to the needs, to, add, to create policies, institutionalize what should be done, get the stakeholders in. It does not end. When, when, when they are talking in tourism, most times it's Nollywood, Nollywood, Nollywood. Yeah, they are pumping some money. It is the Nollywood people. Comedians are not benefiting. Dancers, then we have theatre artists, we have makeup artists, we have... Um, even the Alagai Duros, they fall under the creative economy. So we need to be given an agency so that they can attend to the, we can identify, they will identify with the problem, the stakeholders will come. Because we can have stakeholders for as long as we, 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 we can, but if there is no end, there's no, nobody at the end, at the other end, talking from the creative point, not from the tourism point, to, uh, to meet the needs, the desires, the demands of the creative industry, and then create policy to guide them, regulate them, so that we don't have abuses, we don't have, um, you don't, we don't continue to have so this kind of, you know, we don't continue to fall into this kind of situation. Thank you. Okay. Uh, you you said so much, and um, God rest Mobad's uh, soul. Uh, you said so much already, but. All the things you said keeps revolving around 
the need for a union for creatives, uh, which P-Man is also here. So I would like to ask, was Mubad a member of P-Man? Uh, what was done, you know, by maybe the existing unions to be able to protect him? And all those things we're talking about, contractual agreement, I think it's best for us to wait for the investigation of the police to come out because we don't know. There are many things that are going wrong as been said online, we don't know what is what. Let's just wait for the police. They've had an autopsy to come out with their investigation, pure and simple. But I'd like to ask you, was Mubad a member of P-Man? What did P-Man do to speak for most performing acts as we speak on ground in Nigeria? What did P-Man do to review contracts and things like that or give them awareness as how to sign contracts? And... Um, I like that question to spread across, bro, because everything you said it, is still around the unionization of some sort. And I think P-Man is there already. And I mean, there are other musical societies too, like Koson that talks about the rights of musicians and, and things like that. So I'll come to you first, sir. Was he a member of P-Man? What did P-Man do all these years, even when they heard whispers of contracts? Because it's not only the person you know, that has gone through ordeals like this, there are other people. Sure. I'd like to hear from you then. I'll also come to you mm -hmm. to comment on that, sir. King, King, uh, King David III, good to see you again, sure. sir. It's nice to see yeah. you too. Okay, um, your, your question, I would like to give you a direct answer. I do not think that Mubad, may he so rest in peace, is directly a member of Piman, but there is something we call the situational membership. Uh, that is the only uh, musician's body we have in this country, and in principle, we regard that musicians are generally disposed to be PMA members. We don't have factions, we don't have any other. In the past, we had advocated and spoken about standardizing contracts, ensuring that we produce a format of contract. But just like I told you just now, things have happened in the industry, and those, those, those systems have been left behind. Back in the days, the relationships we have, that artists have with any organization at all, from the beginning is always the relationship between the, act, the artist and his recording company. The rec recording labels were very, very few, and they didn't wield the kind of powers that they wield now. With the demise of recording companies because of social media and IC advancement in ICT, we find out now that we need a review. And that is what, what, I, what I refer to as the backwardness of our governance uh, um, uh, modalities, okay, of, of systems. Just like you find out that we have a, a, a central governance system in, in Africa, all across Africa that is so backward now, that is how our own institutions, our own independent governance institutions like PIMA, for example, is also backward. So in agreement, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, in agreement with what my sister has, all, has just been hammering on, we do need actually to come together and say, look, this is what to do to modernize and to catch up with this race. The people who are owning recording companies today do not even qualify to a vast extent to be called musicians in the first place. There are people just like my sister mentioned, I agree with you completely, they simply had the means. What the musician cannot do basically is that I can't shoot my videos. I require close to four million or eight million naira to shoot one video. If I go on a, on, to a level, they sign me on, what they do principally is to provide up to like 20 or so million to shoot three or four or five videos for me, which are world class, which the MTVs of this world and the sound cities of this world or the other uh, streaming services can begin to use to make me popular. In that event, then I, become, I begin to make a name and I become recognizable and then show promoters begin to come for me and I begin to do tours. So that is the leverage that the recording company, I mean the record labels have now. Okay? No company is now making actual CDs or DVDs or vinyls of records anymore. Everything is digitized, everything is streamed from the internet. You know? So because of this 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 new development, we also need to up our own administration to Okay. So, so you're saying people need to observe. So, because like you were saying, the need for unionization, and I was excited when you talked about Alaga Aduro, yeah, so. because they are heavily unionized, all right? So <laughs> the need for, yeah, I think the Alaga Aduros are one of the most unionized and, uh, people you can ever think of. You don't just become, and what it means for the sake of our audience yeah. that don't speak Yoruba, <laughs> is the fact that they are people, they are moderators at traditional wedding ceremonies. And they are highly, heavily unionized. In fact, you even need to get a certificate yeah. 
before you come in uh, there. So let's speak about the need for you know because all those things we're saying. Okay. It's just medicine after death. Yeah. Mobad is dead, and that's why it's so sweet in our mouths to say all of this now. What could we have done? Let's talk about the need for unions and all of that. Um, and also, mm. a part both of you have missed in all of this is the role of real private investable capital. You know, because it's not just mega capital like the people that have record labels, but real impact investable capital where big conglomerates can say, we're bringing in our cash and we're having impact investment in XYZ area, in the entertainment industry, in XYZ area, in music production videos and things like that. Okay, um, I'll answer that first. Is, um, a lot, it, the, the entertainment industry is very capital intensive and people want return on investment on what, you know, what they can what, what, what they have t tried, tested, and proved that they're going to get their ROI back on any amount of money, the amount of money they put into it. The entertainment industry does, is not like that. You may think that, oh, this song is going to blow, or <laughs> this artist is going to be, you know, is, be, be the, the cash cow, and it may not be so, because it's a spiritual job. <laughs> Let's be like that, you know, <laughs> and that's what's behind this thing. So we don't know. So who, no, 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 not too many people want to do that. Yeah, maybe in the movie industry, the, the, the advent of Netflix and then the other one, yeah. So they are now putting money, that's in, in movie industry, it's been tried, tested, and proved, you know. So, but in the music industry, it takes the like of maybe Baba Keke, like my brother, can you going to say, hey, but he has lost so much in the time past that you just think that, please, I bet let me just face my radio, JJ. Do you understand? So because of the insecurity of your capital invested into it, it is not guaranteed that the entire money no, will but, come back. But, but in, in real sense, there's yeah. actually a money trail. I'm sorry, with due respect, I beg to disagree. Okay. There's actually a money trail because, you see, all these big acts you're seeing today, yeah. The same companies you think have faded away, yeah. the Sonys of this world, are the ones making all those monies in can distribution. I, can I come to... Uh, can let, I, let, can let me just finish that. They are the ones making all the money in distribution. Look at all the big Nigerian acts. The side distribution is the likes of Sony and all of that. They are the ones projecting their acts abroad. And they are the ones making... And that's why Veggie Records is coming to Nigeria. Gamma, all of them are coming back. Because they are definitely... They have structure... And they are eating from the pie because of our disorganization. Thank you. You just said two things. They have structure. We don't have structure. Number two, you said the big artist. How do, does an artist just become big overnight? It's going to take somebody's money, like 20 million, over tw two years, minimum of two years. Like, look at um, what's it, um, Rema. Rema just won an MTV base. I mean, even MTV Global, not MTV base, MTV Global Awards. The best African beat art, Africa, Africa, Afro, Afro beat artist. But you know, Rema has been here for five years. Somebody's money, somebody's investment. You took Marvin's, who has lost from on other artists, because when they picked up Rema, it wasn't just Rema. There were two, three, four. And same amount of money was put on each and every one of them, but this one excelled. How many people want to wait till after five years? You want to gamble? I'm not saying our industry is a gambling industry, but you, you, it must take compassion and trust and patience and perseverance to run our industry. And that is why it is the artists who have gone through that, that are putting their money into it. So they put money on three, they know which one will sell because they push three songs out, out of the three songs from okay, three different artists. Okay, if you want to say something, so, so sorry to come. Okay, let me just round up. Yeah. So out of that, one person, so they now know that, okay, 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 we don't need to put too much money on two, on these two, let's just focus on this one. You know, that's how it rolls. Okay. Before we go, because it looks <laughs> oh. like we're running out of time. Yeah. <clears throat> two things. Number one, I think the business of government is to provide an enabling environment. Because where you talk about contractual relations, you know, contractual relationships are between artists and whoever they are entering into contract with. But government has a responsibility to provide and an enemy environment. You were talking about decoupling the Ministry of Youth and Sports. I think they've done that. Okay. The Ministry of Youth is now separate from the Ministry of Sports. So your objectives may well be met <laughs> beyond the decoupling. I've been pushing that 
there for 10 years. Then you were talking about focusing specifically on the creative, on the creative industry. industry. Well, yesterday, when Senator Elisha Abo went to visit uh, the Mobad family, mm -hmm. you know, it was disclosed that he's the Senate Committee Chair on Entertainment yeah. Economy. He for the first time. And also, <laughs> one of the things he said there was that he will campaign for the establishment of a Creative Economy Commission. So does that sound like a good idea that you think artists, musicians, everybody should buy into to make sure that that comes to fruition? We hope that when that happens, they are not going to bring a man from Hollywood to come around Hollywood because he's their nephew. Because there are two different ball games. It has to be somebody, the, the, the organic people running their own plantation. So that is my, my. Then another thing is that we need also the, 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 when, when they have an agency for the creative, creating regulations and policies, also let there be protection. Because when, for that guy not to have gone to the police, it is because his boss had, he knew he had fraternized with the security agencies, both the NDLE and both the Nigerian police. And so he couldn't run there. He didn't feel safe. But if the government gives us an agency, the government will have his own security agency, I mean security agents, to handle such abuses, not just with the music industry. What about, look at Yabo Ojo carrying this in on her head. She's not a musician. But she too said that she had suffered abuses in our industry before she rose. The abuses are still ongoing. And so we need the thing now so that we don't, we can release our children into this industry so that we don't think that all of them should go and be learning how to tie gilly and make up only. Thank you. All right, um, King, da King David III, I mean, a number of things have been expressed and um, Mobad's death not being in vain would mean that justice is served. For a number of people, this is their thinking. How would you want this case to play out? Because beyond just justice for him, it's also going to act as a deterrent to a similar you know, situation happening. How do you think, I mean, yesterday we've had statements, there was a peace, peaceful um, you know, procession for him yesterday, a concert in his honor, but very importantly is to uncover all that has happened. What are, you, what are your expectations? And now you're speaking on behalf of artists in Nigeria, because there are many people who don't have a voice, and this situation has sort of given them a voice. We're seeing people, call, even at that, they're still afraid to come out because of the repercussion. And then I want you to speak, maybe um, KSB, because um, you have, your family has, you know, um, in, inroads into the entertainment industry. This cabal they talk about in the entertainment industry, can you speak about it? This gatekeepers, even resorting to, like you mentioned, even at very high levels, fraternizing with institutions to empower their cabals. I want you to talk about it this morning because it, is, it has been uncovered as a result of this unfortunate death. I'll start with you, King David III. Thank you so much. Um, I'd like to start by saying that the call that we have made at this opportunity for a certain organization, or a certain commission, a certain regulation to arise and to begin to tackle this thing underlines the need for specialization. Nothing is as easy as it appears on the front pages. Everything in life has depth. There are technicalities, there are things that we need to learn. For example, we are talking about youths, we are talking about entertainment. I'm no longer a youth, but I'm still an entertainer. You know, so people think that the things about entertainment are completely and totally youthful. But there's a Louis Armstrong somewhere who was singing at his old age, a Frank Sinatra somewhere who sank into his old age, a Richard somewhere. Would they be answerable to the Ministry of Youth in America? No, so it's not all about, it's not about age. It's about culture, actually, okay? And culture is what a people do to get along in their lives. What, you know, that kind of thing. But th these are two technical things. I cannot go into that at this, at this time. But let me talk uh, a little bit about um, my expectations from what, is, what, what the current affairs. Right now, the young man is gone. May he so rest in peace. I think that 80% of the passion and the outpouring that we have with weakness, 80% is for the, for the need that the, 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 the populations of the world recognize in the fact that something needs to be done so that this thing does not repeat. Not because they want to bring the young man back. I think so, very, very strongly. So people are reacting across the entire world to say that, look, this is 
This is a bad thing that has happened, and humanity should not allow this to happen to the next person. You know, so I think in my own um, assessment that this is why we have such outpouring of real grief and sympathy right at this moment. And we do not just want a pity party. As soon as uh, the next month is come and gone, we have forgotten about Mubad, uh, we revert back to, 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 to status quo. No, I think that the discussion we're having this morning is very, very instrumental, you know. Let us see what can be done. Can we carry this thing further? Can we begin to call meetings? Can we go to the government? Can we call ourselves and say, okay, can we constitute a committee to advise government on what needs necessarily to be done? Okay? Because just look at the entertainment industry in Nigeria. I like to differ from uh, what my sister said, that we don't make so much money. We make so much money, it is unbelievable. In fact, the Nigerian entertainment industry right now, globally, makes more money for Nigeria than oil. I can tell you that categorically. The reason why we are not seeing it is because that industry is not articulated. We are not organized yet. If you know what amounts of money streaming platforms are taking from only the music business alone, I'm not talking about even film streaming, just the music, which is just audio. If you know how much they are making across the entire globe, anywhere you go, do you see how popular these boys are? I mean, look at Mubad. He's not one of... And he's not considered, before his death, he was not considered an, an A-list in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the class of Burner or Whiskey or Davido. You know what I'm trying to yes. say. He's some, some, somewhere in the B-list, yeah. in, in my own calculation. But Mobad had people in Berlin. He was on Times Square in, uh, in America yeah. just yesterday. Hello? You know what I'm trying to say? So yes. you, if, 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 if only you, you know the impact of what Afrobeat has achieved across the entire globe, not only in the English-speaking part of the world, yes. you'll be shocked that the Nigerian government has no handle on how to bring in revenue Largely from this. Untapped. And yes. these are some of the issues that you must see? be addressed in order to fully tap into that industry. Exactly. All right, let me come to um, KSB with regards to the cabal. This um, as this group that are holding to ransom, and mm -hmm. just if, very, very briefly, because we have only two minutes left. Okay, um, it wasn't so at the beginning. It was a, something that we I want to sing. I have the talent. Let us check you out. That then they maybe through talent platforms, then you are discovered, and then the platform is given to you. Then you rise. But there were this case of boys who are in other in courtism, who brought this thing in. For instance. In the event of this Mubab story, the AA fraternity had to come out to denounce or to say that, hey, this boy called so 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 and so is not a member of our association, of our society. And so in a situation where, because what they were trying to avoid, if they don't denounce or say at least that we don't know him, the other court guys may rise to start, get on the street and start to kill. So it, this is this young guys that brought this cabal and then cultism and uh, drugs into this business. And most of these guys were the ones that came from abroad, the UK mostly. They were not living here. And in fact, when we, when we what we experienced when they first came was you get to a, to a club and then the the, organ, the owner of the label may say that the DJ must not play any other artist except his only artist. I, there was a case of um, this current Mobab's um, company going to a club and harassing a DJ that if you play so so and so person, we're going to bury, we're going to kill you and give you a shallow burial. And so, so it is the <laughs> the person and the cult, the cult they belong to that they brought into this. You understand? So it was not so at the beginning. And so that now made other people to feel that, hey, if you have this cult backing you, that's the own Kaba, I better run here. So if you are with Whiskey, let me run to Davido. If you are not with, David, let me run to Olamide. So you see, they become the gatekeepers. Olamide, Wizi, even Tiwa would have to even check, where would I hide? <laughs> Do you understand? So that is, it is so, it is, it is going on like that, but we don't want it like that anymore. Thank well, you. certainly, it's a, uh, you know, a bad thing to turn the cultural sector into a secret society yes. with different uh, wings to it. Anyway, thank you very much, uh, Kenny St. Brown, and thank you very much, uh, King David III, for joining us.
on The Morning Show today.